Welcome to Solution Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk about how you determine if compounds are soluble or insoluble in an aqueous solution. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to understand reference table F on your chemistry regions tables, which can be a little confusing. Then we're going to look through worked example one, two, and three. Let's start off by talking about table F. Table F is the solubility guidelines for aqueous solutions, which means our solvent here is going to be water. So table F shows solubilities of different compounds, in other words, which compounds are soluble and will dissolve in water, or which are insoluble and will not dissolve in water. They will stay as a solid, or another term, precipitate. They will stay as a precipitate. The left box on table F lists ions that form soluble compounds, but there are a few exceptions that are given. So we are looking at ions which if they are in a compound, when they are placed in water, they will dissolve. This includes all group one ions like lithium and sodium ammonium, and be careful with ammonium, that's not ammonia. Ammonia is NH3, this is the ion, ammonium. Acetate, whether you look at it as C2H3O2, negative one, or CH3COO, minus one, which is the more organic form. Hydrogen carbonate, HCO3 minus one. Chlorate, ClO3. Halides, Cl minus one, Br minus one, I minus one or sulfate. So any of these ions, if they are found in a compound and they are placed in water, they will dissolve into mobile ions. Unless, in terms of the halides here, if the halides are bound to either Ag plus one, Pb plus two, or Hg2 plus two, which is known as dimercury, these will be insoluble. Insoluble. In other words, if you had AgCl, that would form a solid. PbCl2 would form a solid. Hg2Br2 would form a solid. So anything in this column right here in this box, when combined with any of the halides, would not dissolve in water. It would stay as a solid. Same thing for sulfates. In general, sulfates are pretty soluble, unless they are bound to Ag plus one, Ca plus two, Sr plus two, Ba plus two, or Pb plus two. Any combination of these ions with sulfates will form insoluble compounds. In other words, will not dissolve. They will not dissolve, they will stay as a solid, and they will not form mobile ions. Let's talk about the right box of table F. This box lists ions that form insoluble compounds. In other words, they will stay as a solid. They will not dissolve in water. The other term that we use for this is that it will stay as a precipitate. Or if these two compounds come together in a double replacement reactions and you form one of these compounds in an aqueous solution, it will precipitate out. It will form a solid. Again, we have a few exceptions that go hand in hand with our box on the left. So ions that form insoluble compounds, compounds that will not dissolve in water. Again, they will stay as a solid. So we term this as compounds having very low solubility. Now, is there degrees of this? Is this so straightforward of either solid or not a solid or soluble or insoluble? In Regents Chemistry, it's pretty one or the other. But if you take AP Chemistry someday, there's a degree of whether something is soluble or insoluble. But that is something that you can explore more if you decide to take AP Chemistry. So ions that form insoluble compounds include carbonate, CO3 minus two, chromate, phosphate, sulfides, and hydroxides. So in general, if you see that negative ion as part of a compound, your first instinct might be, okay, that is insoluble, it's not going to dissolve. But of course, we do have an exceptions. And in this case, there's a lot of exceptions. So carbonate, typically insoluble, unless it's combined with our group one ions, which makes sense because we know that all group one ions are soluble, 
or if that is with ammonium, NH4+, which again, we know that any compound that has ammonium in it will be soluble if you go back and look at the left-hand side. Chromate, CrO4-2, again, these will be soluble when we combine them with the group one ions, calcium, magnesium ions, or ammonium. Phosphate, typically insoluble, unless that phosphate ion is combined with group one ions, because any compound with a group one ion in it is going to be soluble, or ammonium. Sulfides, typically insoluble, unless, again, we're seeing a trend here, a pattern of group one ions or ammonium. And finally, hydroxides. Hydroxides are pretty insoluble, unless they're with your group one ions, calcium ion, barium ion, strontium ion, or ammonium. And again, if you go back and look at those, especially with group ones or ammonium, we're going to see that they all form soluble compounds. So really what you need to do is be very careful as you use this table. Let's go through and look at some examples. When attempting to decide if a compound is soluble or not, in other words, will it dissolve, recall how to break neutral ionic compounds up into individual ions. So let's start with something pretty easy. Example here is sodium chloride. So if I look at sodium chloride, I know the positive ion is going to be Na plus one, and my negative ion is going to be Cl minus one. And because the plus one and the minus one cancel each other out, my formula here is going to be NaCl. So the question is, is this soluble or insoluble? So now I look at table F, and I can find the sodium ion on table F. It's over on the left-hand side, and it falls in the soluble compound, always. And then I can even find the Cl minus one, and that is also in the left-hand side in the soluble column. And the Cl minus one here isn't bound to one of the exceptions. Therefore, I would classify NaCl as soluble. Okay, this is something that when I add salt, table salt, sodium chloride to water, it will dissolve. Let's look at another problem. Silver chloride. All right, silver chloride. So my positive ion is going to be Ag plus one because I can look that up on my reference table. My negative ion is going to be Cl minus one. Therefore, if I put Ag plus one and Cl minus one together, my formula is AgCl. And again, I need to go figure out, is this soluble or insoluble? So I look at reference table F, and I start by looking over on the left-hand column. Now, Ag doesn't fall into the far left-hand column of soluble ions, but Cl minus one does. So Cl minus one is typically soluble, unless it is bound to Ag plus one. There's my first example of something that is insoluble. So AgCl is going to be classified as insoluble. Last problem, barium hydroxide. Barium, the positive ion, according to our reference table, is going to be Ba plus two. Hydroxide, if we look at table E, we know that hydroxide is OH minus one. And if I put these two ions together for my formula, I'm going to cross down, no positives, no negatives, no one. So this is gonna be BA. I have to remember to put my parentheses around the OH, all of them, and I'm going to put a subscripted two right here. So there's my formula. So now the question, is this soluble or insoluble in water? So BA appears in a whole bunch of different spots on reference table F. So let's not focus on BA. Instead, let's focus on hydroxide. And hydroxide falls on the box on the right-hand side of insoluble compounds. So the hydroxide ion is typically insoluble unless it's with group one ions, which barium is not a group one ion, but calcium ions, barium ions, strontium, or ammonium. So here we have barium. And because barium is an exception to the rule, that means barium hydroxide is soluble. So I don't have an image of barium hydroxide in water. Here it is as a solid. But if you can imagine adding barium hydroxide to water, you would see that it would dissolve. It would not stay as a solid, but it would dissolve into mobile ions. So what did you learn? We talked about how to understand reference table F when we looked at one, two, 
three worked examples. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.